Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Metal Effort. So, I'm going to do a review of this particular Alamic Busker. After the review, immediately following, I'm going to do a comparison contrasting this Alamic Buster to this Alamic Busker. Uh, so that'll be something fun to look forward to. Uh, let's start off with some size comparisons. I've got the PM2 here next to another slightly smaller knife, the Para 3. Uh, the Para 3 is a 3 inch blade, the Olamic Busker is 2.5, and you can see the difference there. Much smaller knife, obviously, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, we'll also com compare it to the infamous small Sabenza, another 3 inch blade. Uh, weight wise, this is actually lighter. Speaking of which, let's do a official weigh in here. I do want to compare the two Olamic buskers here. This is our Timascus Olamic busker coming in at 2.94, and then just compare that really quick to the Frosty busker, which is a a little bit heavier, not much different. It's probably to do with that uh, Largo blade on that particular model. All right, so let's get into our dent. See if we can find a dent in this Alamic Busker. The decent, the excellent, the negative, and the terrible. So first off, I want to talk about its size. So. You know, people have different preferences. They use knives for different reasons. I love this knife for everyday carry. Uh, it's something that where I work, I don't want to scare anybody. Uh, before I take it out, I'm always asking permission uh, if anybody's around me before I take it out. I want to be really respectful to people and not scaring them. And this is a perfect knife for that. It's small, it's unassuming, and not not many people are going to be scared by just the, the sheer size of this knife. It's very small, which is great. Uh, that leads into another aspect of the knife that's always kind of fighting with the size of a knife is at a certain point it becomes not comfortable to hold. And that is not the case with the Olympic Busker. It's probably one of the uh, best aspects of the size of this knife is that it's small, takes up very little space in your pocket while being extremely comfortable in the hand. Uh, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, this is probably a good 8. Um, something like the Para 3 is like a, a 9.5 to me. I think this is really comfortable. Um, and this is right behind that. I think having the finger choil, your thumb is right where it wants to be. You have a lot of security when you're doing any kind of cuts. Uh, ergonomically, I think this is a very, very good knife for that kind of thing. So that's awesome. Um, another thing I want to look at here is the ceramic clip here, uh, the ball. Uh, the, clip, whoopsie, the clip itself is Timascus. Uh, which does have an actual practical effect on it one way or another, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But one thing I do like about it is just this non-moving, it's set, it's not going anywhere, that ceramic ball. Uh, this makes it very easy to get it into your pockets. I will say this particular clip is very tight, so if you're doing like big jeans or something, it doesn't have a lot of give, but that ball does help. I think if it was a normal clip um, where you had to bend it over um, the lip of it, it would be a lot more difficult. This just kind of guides it right in, which is excellent. So the next thing I want to talk about is the blade shape. So the tip of this, or the blade shape of this, is called the Semper. They have the Largo. I think they have the Vampo. There's another, another weird, like multi-grind one that I'm not super into. So I don't even bother remembering the name of the blade, but 
this is really nice. It's not like a straight sheep's foot. It's it's you know got got a little that belly. It's almost all belly. You have a little bit of a flat flat part right here, but this is just a really practical blade shape. It uh, has enough of a, a swedge here on the top to kind of well, it's not really swedge. I mean, swedge up here, but you can you can get enough to like you know punch it into a sandbag or something if you needed to. Um, again, that kind of contributes it not being too sharp to the aesthetics of the knife not being like too murdery. So I like that aspect of the blade shape, very practical. And this particular one, because it's got this little swedge down sloping thing here, it uh, doesn't take up as much space which is good. Um, another thing is action. So this has ball bearings, uh, caged ball bearings inside. Um, pretty, pretty easy to handle when I took this apart. They stay in. It was easy for me to clean it out, oil it up, and it, it's got a good action. It's obviously not going to be fall shutty with the weight of this blade. It's, it's going to need some encouragement to get down. I mean, if I give it a, a good whack, oops, to encourage it, it can fall down. But it's not going to be a finger guillotine by any, any means. But it's just extraordinarily smooth. It's, it's coming and going. It's a, a comfortable action, which is great. Uh, the next thing I like is the backspacer. So this isn't so much about the Golden Nugget backspacer, which obviously I personally chose and I like aesthetically, but let's see if I could show it off here. Uh, it's a floating ba black backspacer. Sheesh, I'm having a hard time with that. Floating backspacer. So it's got those little, uh, you can see it here, those little ridges so that it gives it that nice finished look without actually having to be press fit where it's really difficult. You know, they're not, again, they're not using the CNC machines on these. These are handmade that this kind of floating backspacer is the perfect solution to where it looks great. It gives it that very fine-tuned look and uh, gives you a little bit of w wiggle room when you're making the knife, which is, which is fine. That's good. Um, the other big thing I like about this knife is just the premium materials. You've got a M390 blade which is top of the class really for uh, folders especially. It's excellent for corrosion resistance, excellent uh, edge retention. Um, there's definitely steels out there that are more difficult to sharpen, but this I wouldn't say is necessarily easy to sharpen. But once it is sharp, you can maintain it with straps unless you're doing something really serious or having to reprofile re the blade or something like that. So, you know, awesome steel, obviously titanium, we've got Timascus. It's all the premium parts. There's nothing I would change as far as, you know, swapping one material out for another. I think this is really top notch. Um, another really appealing part about this knife is all the different ways to open the knife. So you've got what is essentially a spider hole. Uh, there's been a lot of talk on knife forums about, you know, just how many knives have a hole and that's supposed to be Spyderco's shtick. It's not a perfect circle, it's oval, so I guess that's how they're getting away with it. I don't know if they're talking to Spyderco to make sure that they're cool with it, but the end result is I get a, a spider flick a bowl deployment. This is my favorite way to open the knife, is to flick it out. The detent on this knife is very strong, so you get a very authoritative flick out um, acoustically it's great but that's not the only way I mean I can deploy it upside down if I want to oops there we go it's hard to do without hitting that camera I want to be careful uh, the obvious way is this front flipper so the front flipper uh, once you break that detent it's not a super fast way but it is a way to open the knife. Some people are better at it than I am. Um, more about that later, but a lot of different ways to open the knife. It's, it's got that fidgety, fidget factor that it's just fun to you know, open and close this knife in many different ways. It's hard to get bored of the action of this knife because there are so many different ways 
to deploy the knife, unlike some knives. So that's good. Uh, last thing in the decent section is the fit and finish. There is one small problem I'll get to, which is keeping this out of the excellent category, but uh, it's very close. So, you know, again, looking at like that floating back spacer, you've got a perfectly centered blade, which is great. Uh, lots of chamfering pretty much everywhere, except for one place uh, that, again, I'll talk about. It's just a very well done, well put together knife. There's very few gripes. You can tell this is a premium knife and that somebody who cared was the one that assembled and made this, this knife. So very, very, very good work out of Olamic. Happy about that. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on to the excellent things about this knife. I, this one's a little bit more ominous or uh, ambiguous, you might say, but it's all the options that you have. You have so many different ways to spec this knife. It's simultaneously the greatest thing about this knife with a, a couple things that I'll get to uh, that you gotta be careful of when ordering the knife. But on the whole, this is the huge draw, is that uh, Olamic's uh, motto is never the same. And I think that this is really highlighted by just the number of things that they're willing to do with a knife if you're gonna put an order in for yourself, uh, which is great. I, I think it's cool when the, the knife maker gets to express their creativity, but you get to be a part of that process and kind of cook up your own distinct knife if you want to. Um, not a lot of places are doing it, like Olamic with just the sheer number. The website has a really cool kind of guide for the knife to give you excellent pictures and examples of the type of things that they can do as far as blade finishes, blade grinds, the handle material, the handle, um, like for instance, this one is jeweled. Uh, they don't all have to be jeweled. It could be a blasted finish if you want. It can be their kinetic finish where it's kind of a, a raised lined kind of rough finish. Um, Sky's kind of the limit there. I mean, they have sculpting where molten rock and seabed and just a multitude, a menagerie of options. And so you can get lost on their website. I, I do suggest that you go to the website and just for yourself, see the number of options that you have for the busker. It's, it's really exciting and it's cool to see that, you know, if you don't see something that you want, you know, talk to Eugene, maybe, maybe they can make it happen. Like it's really that open. So that's excellent. And because of that, that leads me into my next excellent part of the knife, which is the uniqueness factor. Because of all those options, when you get your knife, you feel like you're the only one to have that particular knife. You know, sure, I might see, you know, something with a jeweled, you know, finish on this, but maybe not Time Mask is here and here, or, you know, the, the Anno for all the hardware might be different, or whatever it might be that there's millions, literally millions of different configurations that you can do. And so chances are that what you pick is probably yours and nobody else really has that. And that's really cool. I think it's, it's again, that, that intersection of like art and practicality that just really hits home for me. I, I really appreciate those two things when they can work together well. And it's just so difficult to pull that off, whether you're making knives or, or you know, computer hardware or pens or flashlights or anything else, if you can get something that functions really, really well, but also is unique and, and special and artistic, then that's when you really get something that, that is its own and something that kind of puts itself ahead of everything else. So last excellent selection is in spite of the fit and finish and all the options and the detailed work that goes in, into each knife, it does not take Olamec long to get you one. I ordered this knife, and after confirming the order, confirming the choices, it was like five days, and it was done. Like, from scratch, made, and like ready to be shipped within five days, which is amazing. I have a M Malanika Puko on order from Daniel. 
I'm waiting on that knife for a year. <laughs> so uh, the way that Olamic has been able to, you know, create a company, it's not just one person. It's not just Eugene. He's you know one of the co-founders, but they're able to bring people on who can do the same level of work and maintain the quality and just make it available. This is, for all intents and purposes, a custom knife, but you can get one very easily, which is Awesome. I think that's really, really special. A lot of the really well-made knives out there are hard to get, uh, regardless of cost. You know, try to try to find a, a booze blade smoke. You know, try to find a Holt uh, blade work Spectre. Like those are awesome knives, and I want one too. But I can't get one. <laughs> you have to kind of get lucky on the forums, or just wait patiently to be chosen to have an email sent out to you. Not so with a Lamech. If you want something, you can have it within a week or two, which is great. All right, so we talked, we've been gushing about this knife, but even though I spent a lot of money on this and I love this thing, I've got some negatives to talk about. So first negative on this particular model, not model, but this particular knife, uh, I'm going along with this whole uniqueness factor, my detent on this is a smidge strong. I, I prefer a stronger detent than like a wet noodle detent, but it's such that you saw earlier when I'm trying to do this like upside down flick, on this particular, the amount of pressure that I'm having to overcome is hard. And you have to like put your finger parts in places anywhere but on the lock bar because with such a strong detent, uh, it doesn't make it easy if you have even just like the lightest pressure right there and the knife ugh, becomes very difficult to open. So, a uh, little too strong, a little too strong detent. I, uh, speaking of, you know, the Spectre from Holt Blade Works, they've got a really ingenious way uh, to adjust the detent on your own, which is awesome. I, this is such a small knife. But if they could have something similar to what the Holtz have done over at Holt Blade Work to adjust the detent, that would be awesome. Um, yeah. But anyway, it's not a huge deal. The knife still functions in my favorite way to open it. Uh, that stronger detent almost makes it that particular way of opening the knife even more fun just because it's such a good thwack, uh, which I don't mind. Uh, anyway, so... I kind of already brought this up a little bit, but that, this lock bar is, I don't know, it's like physics doesn't make sense because if I'm trying to do a front flip and I, I have to like not, you want to hold, you want to hold the knife so that when you do a front flip, the knife doesn't fall out. There's this like moment on a front flipper where like, you know, imagine in your head that I'm going to open this, that really the only, for a second, the only way that I'm, I've got to purchase on the knife so it doesn't just fall out of my hand, is kind of in between this and this on my like middle finger is like what's holding the knife. And so with such a strong detent, I can't do that. Like it, so much of the knife, it just wants to curve out of my hand like this. And so I need to get a better grip on it, but I can't touch that lock bar at all. Otherwise, I cannot break that detent. And so basically because of the detent and because of the size of the knife and the fact that if you have any pressure on that lock bar, it basically makes it nigh impossible to get like a good fast deployment on that front flipper. Like I have to very carefully not put any pressure. I mean, the clip is really what I'm grabbing onto. And then... I slowly open it like that. I cannot do it fast, the knife will fly out of my hand. Um, I don't know how much of that is just my, my knife because of that detent, but I, I imagine even with a lighter detent, which we could test out here in a second, you just gotta steer clear of this lock bar when you're opening the knife. It's tricky. Again, unless you're doing the spider flick, in which case it's awesome. So there you go. Kind of negative part of all these extra options is that you can accidentally spec something that is gonna create more negatives for you than you would otherwise have. Uh, what I mean by that, I really like the look of this jeweled finish on the handles. I think it's awesome. Um, 
ever so slightly. I think it hides scratches, but still has like that glimmer to it. What I didn't really think about or anticipate is that because of this just smoothness on the knife, it's just a slab of titanium. There's no blasting or anything. This sucker is slippery as hell. So, you know, having the frosty first and then going over to this, I was surprised at how slippery it was. So, you know, if, if you're watching this, then you can hopefully avoid situations like that. But because there are so many different options, I think that there's ways where you can kind of sabotage yourself a little bit and making a knife that maybe doesn't suit your needs. Like for me, I'm not super hard use. So I'm not like really upset by the fact that this is slippery enough to note it and to mention it in this review. But for me, it, it doesn't bother me. But if you're, if you were, you know, working in the Vaseline factory, like Nick says, this is going to be too slippery. It, it's going to be a problem for you. Where maybe a different finish, like the kinetic finish, the frosty finish, one of the sculpting finishes uh, that aren't polished might do the trick for you. So keep that in mind. If you have a specific use case for your busker, have that be a factor of the finish that you choose. So be careful. Uh, another negative here is your your finger goes on that choil. Like I really, I'm not using the knife like that. It's goofy. It really wants to sit there. And you just have to be careful when you're moving your finger this way. There's a little sharp pokey right here. And this is the same on both buskers that I have. And I've I've learned to not put a lot of pressure there and not move that particular direction. But uh, a couple times I'll snag my finger and uh, it got a little raw. And so I, I've learned to kind of avoid it in the right way. But it's just that like little nagging thing of like, I want to, I almost want to get in there and like try to do a small chamfer, but I don't know. It's $800 knife. I don't know if I want to mess, mess with that, but it was on both. So I don't think it's a one-off Thought I'd mention it. Lastly, in the negative section is my particular one here, this is, let's see if I, how close I can get, I might even zoom in a little. All right, so you got the time mask this clip right here. So it looks good. The polish here is smooth. You can't feel it really. It's hard to discern that. And then you churn it and there's a gap right there. Again, I cannot discern this. If I close my eyes or if I was blind, I would never know that there's a gap right there. I cannot feel it, but I can see it and I don't like it. Uh, it's not even like an even gap, but you can see like crud's already starting to get in there and it's not something I want to like gouge something in there to clean out because I don't want to pry it up anymore. It's not moving. I thought, well, maybe you know, I gotta press it in there or something or what's going on, but there's a gap. So that one small little thing is what's keeping this out of the, the fit and finish. Ooh, 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 the fit and finish being in the excellent, it's gonna only be in the decent because of that small little issue, but not the end of the world. And then unless you're really looking for it, you're probably not gonna notice it most of the time. Cool, On to the terrible. I've got nothing. There's nothing terrible about this knife. I, I've i been overwhelmingly positive on the knife, and I'm, I'm really happy I got it, even though, as I've discussed, there are some a few negatives. Uh, but nothing terrible. It's not like, oh, no, what did you do? Why did you do that? Aside from maybe this. But, again, given the fact I can't see it or feel it unless I'm looking for it, I'll give it a pass for now. All right, so that's pretty much my review on this busker. I think, you know, given this, the level of options, both not just in what kind of finish you want, the blade and all that stuff, but what price point you have in mind. If you want like the vanilla busker for like 350 to $400, you can do that. And it's gonna be an awesome little knife for you and I can highly recommend it. And if you want to spruce it up a little bit, then that's uh, available to you. So given the quality, the speed at which you can get it, and just the sheer number of options that 
can make it your own, this is a, a highly recommended knife from me. And so this leads me into the comparison part of the review. So I've got the one I just reviewed here and then this one on the right. It's the one I won from a knife raffle for 20 bucks, which is awesome, but it gives us the opportunity to compare two different buskers with all those different choices and just see, you know, what's different. And maybe this will help you if you're deciding on ordering a busker, what to look out for, what uh, is gonna be important to you in choosing all those different options. So first thing I wanna talk about is the busker's frosty finish. So this finish is sculpted. It's a sculpted finish. You can tell uh, it's not a perfectly flat surface. So what that does is it gives you a much better grip on the surface of the knife. It's not slippery hardly at all. If you sweat a lot or if you're working in the grease factory or something like that, this will, this will be a better option for you. It's not just the sculpting, it's also the actual like finish itself, this kind of like chiseled, polished look. Um, also contributes to a little bit of a rough finish on it, which again helps to keep it in your hand, which is something like I mentioned on my Timascus Busker is pretty, pretty slippery. If you have any kind of moisture, lotion or anything like that on your hands, it's gonna be pretty pretty smooth and slippery. And the other thing that's a really a major difference from this busker is on this one, the detent is way softer. I'm gonna maybe zoom out a little bit so we can see this, but I can do the normal spider flick no problem. And it's not like so weak of a detent that that action doesn't feel good. It still feels good. It, it comes out nice and hard and strong. Yeah, we're just gonna leave that there. Uh, the other thing is like that upside down flick that I was trying to do, much easier to do on this knife because of that softer detent. And lastly, when you're going to be doing the front flipper action, way easier to open on this knife. So I think, I don't know if it's because the detent is just softer and it's just kind of a luck of the draw, or if this one's gonna break in over time, or if it's the shape and the weight of the blade is helping, but the detent on this knife is 100 times better than all, not 100 times, it's, it's better. This is similar, but the other two ways of trying to do this is a little bit harder and doing the upside down flick. Again, can happen, but it's just so much detent that I have to overcome. <sighs> I wish I had that detent on this knife. It's a bummer, but alas, what can you do? The Advantage of this one over the frosty one is uh, again that blade shape. So this this sucker is big in your pocket It's like a pear shape and unfortunately normally I like the tip up carry that's usually my preference But I wonder with the Largo blade if it would be better for the knife to have a tip down carry because then it's guiding your hand out and you're not snagging on anything, so that would just be better when you're reaching into your pocket to get stuff, it would guide. But when it's this direction, it's like, oh, bah, big old object to try to get behind. It's, it's not helping your hand out, it's not doing any favors, really. So in your pocket, I definitely do not prefer the Largo shape. So if that's a factor for you, uh, that'll be one to note. Um, another thing is, <laughs> I really went to town on this knife, so, you know, cost-wise, you're having Timascus inlay, Timascus collar, Timascus clip. This is an $800 knife. This is more like a $500 knife with this finish. And I think practicality versus money, this one is a more practical knife overall. Aside from, if I could get this knife with Semper blade, I think it would be a strictly more practical knife than this one, given the finish, the... Uh, ease of holding it and it not slipping, slipping out, and just the cost, I think this would be a better option. Um, so keep that in consideration. Um, the other thing is with this finish, it's also going to hide scratches and fingerprints a little bit better. Um, fingerprints do not show up on the handle at all. Uh, it always looks top-notch in that regard. This one 
even on the jeweled, I think I prefer the jeweled over to like just a flat, you know, polished titanium because fingerprints don't show up too bad on this part. Like maybe you could see it if really discerning, but this Timascus inlay, man, you could like hack my account right there. <laughs> it's, it's, it is super strong of a fingerprint magnet. So I find myself wiping this down. Luckily where I work, I have a microfiber cloth on me all the time. So it's not a problem. I can always clean it off. Part of the fun, right? Right? Last thing that I like to point out that's different about these knives is the clip. So this is just your normal, I assume titanium clip. Might be aluminum, but I, I assume it's titanium. But here you could see, let me if I do that, there you go. You can see they milled it out a little bit on the inside right there, right on the inside there. So what that does is give you a little bit more give. It, I can actually lift this up with my finger. This is easier to get in, number one, and it's gonna give your pants a little bit more space for the material. So if you're wearing jeans or something, I might not recommend going for the Timascus clip because whatever it is about the Timascus, they don't mill that sucker out. I don't know if that's something that, I'm sure if you ask them, maybe they could do it. Um, I don't know if that's gonna jeopardize like the construction of the Timascus or not, or what other considerations there might be. But yeah, it's a little bit more stiff because of that too. Uh, if I'm wearing jeans, I'm probably not gonna wanna choose this knife because of that. It doesn't give me a lot of space in between. However, this knife is so small, you can usually fit it in the watch pocket in your jeans and not even use the clip. Just a thought, but something worth factoring in again. So there you have it. There's a comparison between the Olamic Busker, Timascus inlay, jeweled, bunch of you know fancy dancy stuff on this guy versus something that's way above just run of the mill plain Jane but it's still significantly cheaper in many ways more practical outside of this particular blade shape. So, hope you like this video. I hope it's helpful to you in choosing your own Olamic options, maybe not even just the Busker. A lot of this applies to the Olamic Wayfair 247 and other options that you have where this might be a factor. So, catch you guys later on the next video and have a good day. <laughs>